what I have here now is I have my chicken breast. Okay, my chicken breasts, they are, they've been sitting out there at uh, about room temperature. Okay, it's always good to, prior to searing your meat, you let it kind of come, take the chill off. Okay, uh, that's going to uh, promote an even sear. Okay, and then what I'm about to do here is I'm about to fill this, uh, this chicken breast uh, with our stuffing, our uh, boars and cheese, prosciutto, spinach uh, stuffing. Okay, real delicious. And then we're going to sear it off and then we'll go ahead and, and finish it in the oven. It's important that you understand uh, for your spinach, your sautéed spinach, okay, there's a, spinach retains a lot of water, okay, so you're not cooking this all the way down, you just want to cook enough uh, to where it softens, okay, and then we're going to, um, you'll see us remove, drain a lot of the water moisture out of the, uh, out of the spinach, okay. So what I have here is I've got a small sauté pan with a little bit of olive oil, okay, I'm going to heat that up real quick. And then go and throw my spinach, just about two cups of spinach. Okay, throw that right in. That's only going to take a minute to cook down. Then what we're going to do is we're going to strain this, we'll chop it up, and then we're going to add that to our, our bowl with our cheese that's been sitting at room temperature. and our other ingredients. So while that's sauteing, okay, I've got my, my borders and cheese here, all right? My other ingredients, I've got my chopped parsley, okay? Chopped parsley, three pieces of minced uh, prosciutto ham, and then one uh, bread, white, white bread sliced, okay, uh, cubed, okay, small cube. You can see all the water that's coming out of the spinach. Okay, the reason why we want to remove all that excess moisture is because otherwise we'd have a runny filling and it would leach all over our chicken breast and they wouldn't stay inside underneath the skin like we want it to. So that's why we go ahead and we cook our spinach down to remove some of that excess water. Okay. And that goes right under our cutting board. Look at all that excess water we have just from that, that, that bunch of spinach. So it's important that we, uh, we, we uh, remove that. Okay. Chop up the spinach real quick. And now we have all our components for our stuffing, okay? I'm just gonna mix that together. Your boars and cheese, your prosciutto ham, it's real salty, so I'll add salt at the very end. And I'll adjust the seasoning, okay, to taste with um, some white pepper and some, some kosher salt. Once that stuffing is prepared, it goes right into the piping bag for later use. Okay. Okay, class, now that we have our stuffing prepared and it's in our piping bag, I'm going to show you how to fill this chicken breast. Okay, how to stuff our, our Supremes. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and without breaking the membrane too much, okay, you're just going to lift up the skin under the breast and you're going to pipe, oh, probably two or three tablespoons underneath the skin. 
Okay. Go ahead and show you on this side as well. This second breast. About two or three tablespoons worth. Okay. Come back here a little more. Set that off to the side. Okay. And then you would just want to massage the, the mixture. Okay. All the way down the breast from, from end to end. Okay. And my, the skin has been seasoned with salt and pepper, kosher salt and black pepper. Again, it's very important that your boards and cheese is room temperature prior to you trying to do this, because otherwise it'll be impossible and you'll end up tearing the skin and all that kind of stuff. You'll, you'll have a mess on your hands. So if that boards and cheese is a little you can let it sit out for 20, 30 minutes as you're preparing other components, um, or you can mix it in a mixing bowl with your hand in a, in a rubber spatula to create some friction and some, some heat um, to kind of soften that cheese. One of two ways you can do it. Okay, so now I've got my cheese, I've got my breast stuffed, okay, with our boards and cheese. The skin is seasoned, salt and pepper. And then that is ready for um, final preparation, which would be, I'm going to sear it, uh, saute it in some olive oil, uh, and then I'm going to finish that in the oven. What I'm going to make now is I'm going to make the garlic mashed uh, potatoes, okay, the garlic mashed potatoes. So what I've done, what I've done is I've, I've went ahead and I've cooked some uh, russet potatoes, I've cut them uniform, doesn't matter how, how big or small you cut them, just as long as they're uniform. Okay, I've cooked those in some salted water for about 20, about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes until they're, they're tender. Okay, I'm going to drain these real quick, and then I'm going to go ahead and add these to my, um, to my, my ricer, okay, with my other ingredients, which is, which is my roasted garlic. I'll show you how to do that in here in a second, as well as my butter, my unsalted butter, and then my heavy cream. And then we'll finish it with a little bit of white pepper and, uh, and kosher salt. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and strain my potatoes real quick. Okay, so I've got my strained potatoes, my strained russet potatoes. I'm gonna go ahead and pour those right into my, my ricer. Okay. And then to that, okay, to that I'm gonna add my roasted garlic. I add my, my roasted garlic. And I'm gonna go ahead and add about an ounce of softened unsalted butter. Okay, you want to make sure you get any of that excess, those excess potatoes. Okay, go ahead and get those out of your ricer. Okay, and then you're going to incorporate more of that butter and the garlic together into the potatoes. Okay. And then add a little bit of salt, kosher salt. Okay, a little kosher salt, some white pepper, and then of course our heavy cream. You don't want to add too much heavy cream because it has a tendency to kind of flatten the, the potatoes and you want to have them Kind of like you know, like that pillow consi uh, consistency. You want to have them nice and 
nice and fluffy. Okay, once that's incorporated, you would go ahead and add it to your piping bag that we've that we've um, we've set up. We've already set up with our with our large star tip. Okay, you're gonna place this into your piping bag. And then you can do this again, do this ahead of time, and then you can keep this warm, and then it'll be ready for service. Keep it warm over a, over a pot, um, maybe some more water, some, some more uh, some water, with a bowl over the top. Set up a, what we call a double boiler, and then cover it with some foil, and then that way you can keep your potatoes nice and warm. And then right before service, you could just take them off your double boiler, and then we'll use that, uh, and then we'll pipe our pipe our potatoes under a plate for our um, dinner for two. It's that simple. Okay, so class, here's your your garlic whole garlic cloves. Okay, I have it on some foil. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil and some kosher salt. Probably a teaspoon of olive oil and some kosher salt. Okay, and then make like a little pocket, a little packet here. Okay, this goes into an, a hot oven, about 400 degrees. Just keep an eye on it. Uh, probably take about 20 to 25 minutes, maybe longer, uh, depending upon the temperature of your oven and the size of your garlic. But there's a little um, little mantra, a little saying we have in the um, food service uh, industry: the nose knows. Okay, so you'll be able to smell the garlic as it starts to caramelize. It'll smell sweet and, and nutty and, and aromatic, uh, ar aromatic. So. Once you start to smell those things, your garlic's probably close to being done, so I'd take it out and check it. So this is gonna go right in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, class, so here we have our prepared uh, stuffed chicken supremes. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how to properly wrap your, uh, your drumette bone um, for a better, cleaner bone on our final product. So what I've done is I've taken some of our terry towels and I've soaked them in some vinegar okay small little small little strips and I'm going to wrap the bone with the terry towel that simple okay and I'm going to hold that in place fold it over hold that in place with a little piece of aluminum foil that I prepared I'll show you again on the second one take your your soaked terry towel wrap that bone fold over take your piece of foil And go over the top of the terry towel and kind of hold it in place. And again, what that's going to do is that's going to help to give a better final presentation. Now, what I have over here on the stove is a saute pan that's getting hot. I'm going to saute this breast skin side down over medium heat. Okay. Medium heat, skin side down first. I add about two tablespoons of olive oil here. Let that get hot. Okay. Your food should talk to you. Your food should talk to you. You should hear, you should, <laughs> you should hear a sound, okay? You should hear a sizzle when you lay that chicken down, okay? If you don't hear anything, your pan's not hot enough. Skin side down. Here we go. There's one.
There's two. That's gonna that's gonna saute for probably anywhere from six to eight minutes. You want some nice color, nice golden brown. We'll turn it over for about 30 seconds and cook the other side. And then we'll transfer this chicken breast to the um, prepared sheet pan we have on a wire rack. Okay, and by doing that, what that does is that promotes more air circulation, so you get even cooking. Okay, as that's roasting in the oven. Well, and it's important that chicken cooks to uh, 165 for 15 seconds. So that's going to help uh, promote even cooking and browning by putting it on that on this uh, wire rack here. So you don't want, you don't want to rush it. You don't want to rush the uh, browning process. Actually, what we're doing the technical scientific name for what this uh, reaction is called is called the, the Malliard reaction. And basically, what that is is that's the the sugars, okay. Uh, and the protein, the carbohydrates, um, caramelizing. And that happens at 310 degrees. Okay, so, so for you food scientists, you factoids out there, okay, this, this searing, this color that we're going to achieve on the skin, um, it's called the Malliard reaction. Okay, when those sugars and the, the proteins, they start to caramelize. Not burn, there's a difference. Flavor Town. Our oven's already hot, preheated, 400 degrees. So I'll sear this about three or four minutes, and then in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Take it out uh, at about 160. Uh, take the temperature, obviously make sure it's 160. That carryover cooking will make it rise above 165 um, and let it rest so the juices can redistribute um, in the meat and then we're, we're good for our, our protein, our main, main component here for our dinner for two. I'm going to go ahead and check this, check this chicken, see how we're doing. Got some nice color. Maybe another second or two. And don't worry if you have a few specks there, uneven specks, it's kind of white and brown. Those, those spaces, I found that they're, they're going to kind of fill in as it roasts in the oven. You'll get that, that, that even color that you, that you want, that you're looking for. Okay, so that's got nice color. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. For the plating, the plating of this, of this dinner for two, okay, first thing that will go down is the potatoes. Okay, the potatoes that we, that we went ahead and made, uh, followed by our chicken, and then our um, velouté sauce that we went ahead and made. I'll show you how to make that here in a second, as well as your um, asparagus for the very end. So those four components are going to go in the plate. Um, you'll see that. It's very simple. Um, plating plating is, is essentially simple. It's, it's getting all those components cooked perfectly to the right temperature, the right color, the right texture. Um, and then it's just it's artwork putting it together. The plating is easy. <laughs> okay, so our chicken is our chicken is nice and sautéed. Got some nice color, golden brown. Okay, I'm done with that pan. Hot pan. End of the oven. About 15, 20 minutes. So class, now what I'm going to do is my stove set up, okay? I'm going to be making my, uh, I'm going to blanch my asparagus, followed by sauteing them. I'll show you that a little later. And I'm also going to be making my lute sauce, my white sauce, okay? My, my supreme. Um, so pay attention because this is where the multitasking kind of comes into play. Okay, so I've got a pot of salted boiling water. I'm going to go ahead and add my asparagus. Now with this asparagus, they're a little bit bigger. So I went ahead and I peeled the ends and I, and I notched them off. I cut them on a bias about 45 degrees. Okay, the reason I did that is for the presentation, they'll stay up a little bit nicer um, on the plate. Okay, and you're going to do it. You need to do a total of six because you need to do three per plate. Um, but I went, ahead and did, I went ahead and prepared like eight asparagus just because I can taste it, one for doneness, et cetera. I might drop one on the floor. You know, you, you never know. So in the water they go. 
boiling water, okay, for about a minute or two. Okay, so while that's while that's getting blanched, I'm gonna go ahead and start my supreme sauce. And for my supreme sauce, okay, I'm gonna start by making a blonde roux, okay? And what a roux is essentially is equal parts fat, equal parts flour by weight. So I've got an ounce of flour, all-purpose flour, and I've got an ounce of unsalted butter here, okay? Unsalted butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my butter first. Cook that down, okay? So blonde, then there's a brown, and then there's a, or there's a, there's a blonde, uh, there, excuse me, there's a white, there's a blonde, and then there's a brown roux. So the, the difference between all those is essentially it's cooking times and knowing what to look for. So with a blonde roux, okay, flour is all, it's all raw. So you're cooking the flour um, for various amounts of time. So with a white, a white roux, you're going to cook it for maybe two or three minutes. Blonde roux, about three to seven. And a dark brown, probably about 10 to 12 minutes. And that dark brown roux is going to have a nice kind of a peanut butter aroma, like a nutty aroma to it. Okay, so my asparagus, they've been cooking for about a minute, right into an ice bath. An ice bath is equal parts ice and equal parts water, okay, and that's going to stop the cooking process, and that's blanching, okay, then you're going to get a nice vibrant uh, green color, okay, to your asparagus, but you don't want to leave the, the vegetables in that water too long, okay. About maybe a minute or two. So my, my butter's melted. Going back to my my roux here. I'm gonna add my flour. Okay. Stir that around. Get that nice and nice and incorporated. Cook that for maybe two or three minutes. What what would happen is if I didn't cook this flour long enough or you know it would it would have a, like a raw you'd have like a like a doughy flavor, you know to your sauce it wouldn't be very wouldn't be very good. So you would just want to cook that a few minutes. You don't want too much color, okay? You don't want too much color. Just a little bit, okay? Is my asparagus blanched, ready to go, ready to to saute? My saute pan here. I'm gonna pat those dry. My saute pan, I'm getting it warm. Heat up, medium high heat. I, I cook over medium high heat. I think that's a safe, safe for me. Some cooks like to cook on low heat, some cooks like to cook on a high heat, you know? Whoop ass. <laughs> we call it. So now that my, my roux, my flour, my uh, butter have been cooked for about three to five minutes, okay, I'm gonna add some hot stock or some warm stock, okay, it shouldn't be cold. Hot product to hot product. And what, okay, so what this roux is gonna do is it, it, it's a thickening agent, okay? So you wanna dissolve the flour and the butter, the roux, okay, into the stock, and then let that come to a boil, because any thickening agents Okay, the liquid needs to come to a boil for them for it to activate the, the true thickening power. Okay. So we'll go ahead and make, add our add our chicken stock to that. And that's gonna come up to a boil. Then we're gonna add some heavy cream and we'll strain it, adjust the seasoning as needed, and then our, our sauce is done. Back to this saute pan for our asparagus. We'll add a little bit of olive oil to it. You don't want any dark, you don't want to burn this asparagus, okay? It's already basically cooked. You want it to be al dente, okay? You want it to have a little bit of a bite. But by sauteing it, we're adding a little bit more texture, you know, and flavor to it. Developing those flavors.
Now you're only going to saute this asparagus for maybe a minute or two. Okay? Little kosher salt. Black pepper. Turn your heat, turn your heat down on your sauce there. Asparagus is done. Set that off to the side. Now we can focus on our sauce. We'll add a little bit of heavy cream. Let this reduce down until what we like to say nappe. Okay, what that basically means is it's it's going to hold the um, the back of a spoon. Okay, if you put your finger through the sauce, you're going to hold that line. Okay, it coats the back of the spoon. That's what nappe is. So that's how that's the consistency that you want your sauce to be. And of course, all sauces, they get strained. Cook that down for just a minute. Get cleaned up here. Our sauce is just about ready to go. Um, we're gonna use, you wanna use some, a little bit more salt, kosher salt, and then white pepper for your supreme sauce. White pepper is pretty, pretty potent, so you gotta be careful. Give that another stir. And then to finish, I like to just put it into a clean saute pan in case I need to gently reheat it for service. And you want to strain it. Okay, get out all those any uh, excess lumps or anything that you, you might have had. And that's ready to go. That'll hold for 10, 15 minutes. So your sauce is ready. Potatoes are ready. Chicken's in the oven. Asparagus is ready. We're ready to plate. Now we have our, we have our components all made. We have our garlic mashed potatoes, which I'm holding in the piping bag. We have our uh, supreme sauce, which is on the stove being kept warm as well as our supreme chicken that we just took out and our sauteed asparagus. So now the magic happens. Now we're just doing the plating, okay? Of course, I just took my plates out of the oven so they're hot, hot food hot, cold food cold. So our plates, we wanna make sure that they're, they're hot. All right, and then you wanna pipe your, your garlic mashed potatoes. And if you're a little off center, you can always adjust your potatoes on the plate to center. I do, it's okay. Okay.
feel free to What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make the both plates identical. So I've, I've kind of put my potatoes on a bias. Okay, I've just shifted them on the plate a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my chicken breast, okay? And you wanna make sure that, just how they were on the chicken, okay? Right side on the right, right breast on the right plate, left, left breast on the left plate. And you wanna put your chicken right on top of the potatoes because you wanna build that height. Okay. And I'm wearing gloves too, right? Because this is ready to eat food. All of this is. Okay. Next, put our supreme sauce about mm, two tablespoons worth at six o'clock. So if you look at your plate and you Imagine a, a clock, you know, on the wall, 12, 3, 6, 9. So I'm putting my sauce at 6 o'clock between the, the potatoes and the chicken. About two tablespoons of sauce per plate. Remember, prior to, prior to plating, I did, I did a taste, the final taste, okay, on everything. And then last but not least, you want to take three asparagus spears, okay, per plate. And you want to lay those guys right in the center, right? Let them rest on top of that drumette bone. This is your, this is your, your plate up. This is your design that, we, that we're looking for when you bring the plate out to us. You can, do, you can wipe the plate when you're done. Once you get your, all your components on there, I would highly recommend it. But again, the cleaner you are as you plate, obviously the less time you're going to have to waste cleaning up your plate. There you go. Dinner for two, ladies and gentlemen. Dinner for two.